Well. Hey friends, so in the last video we were exploring vocoder and the traditional way to use it. This time we're going to take a look at non-traditional ways to use the vocoder and it really is super capable of a lot of stuff. Let's check it out. In this first example, I have this kind of sound. Whoa. So what's going on here is I have an operator just doing a pitch dive. Right, so I've turned the vocoder off. That's just what the operator is doing by itself. So in case you don't know how to do a pitch dive with operator, you just turn on this little doohickey right here that turns on the pitch envelope and you can go up or down, right? And you just set your envelope right here. This is how like long it'll take. So right now I have it on three seconds. You can also make it a lot longer. But I think three seconds is a good setting. So when I turn on the vocoder, before we were looking at the external mode for the carrier, right? The carrier being, in the last video's case, your voice, right? Well, what's cool about vocoder is that they thought of all kinds of fun stuff you can do with it. And one of them is that it has a noise oscillator. And this noise oscillator can be changed Right, it defaults to right here, so it sounds like this. But you can change the setting of the noise oscillator, right? So there's like sample rate is this way, and this is the density, right? So, so all the way down here, we have low sample rate, low density. Whoa. Up here, we have low sample rate, high density, you know. So yeah, the settings of the vocoder, let's just go ahead and build this from scratch. So I'm gonna grab a vocoder. It is already set on noise, and it's already doing this effect. So if I turn on enhance, we're going to make sure that the incoming signal is as bright as it possibly can be, right? And yeah, I just want to dial in the bands. Maybe let's try 12. Whoa. And remember, over here, this is the bandwidth of each one of these bands, right? And at this point, we have 12 bands. So if I reduce the bands... This is just a really cool way to make transition sounds, right? And what you feed it really matters. Like in this case, we have an operator with, if you, if you hear it, it's like. As it gets down lower, you can hear that there are multiple uh, pitches that are happening in different places. If I spread these out a little bit, let's see what happens now. You hear that, hear that change? Let's try maybe a different setting, move something like this. <laughs> That's cool. And yeah, you can also change the format to get brighter sounds or darker sounds, right? But the way that this is working is I'll, I'll show in the next example like why it works this way. So in the next example, I've got this instrument right here and it sounds like, right? It's just a classic little synth keys sound, right? Now, I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this off so we can't hear it. And in this analog track, this is what the analog sounds like. It's also just doing a classic pitch dive, right? And the, the pitch dive area, pitch envelope initial and time, that's what this little thing is right here. And I just kind of pulled this up and now we have, right? So this isn't the sound that I want, okay? The sound that I want to use is this sound, right? So what I did is I chose, this is using this uh, vocoder in the quote unquote traditional way, but I'm actually using two synthesizers, one as the carrier and one as the modulator, right? So the modulator is the track that the vocoder is sitting on. The carrier is this wavetable right here. So when I combine these two together, I get. So what's happening here? Essentially what's going on is that vocoder is basically a really crude spectral filter, all right? So spectral synthesis is the act of taking a bunch of sine waveforms and assembling sounds out of them, right? And basically you're assembling sounds into bins. It's a whole technical thing, doesn't matter. But in this case, this gives us that cool sound, right? That Because essentially what the analog is doing, it's just choosing, what it's doing is it's just choosing the position uh, and the amplitude of each one of the bands, okay? Because it, we can see it kind of move through there. Right, we can see the, the bands move. So in, in essence, we're setting up basically a spectral filter, right? And it's just as simple as making a synthesizer with a pitch drop, right? And then going over to another synthesizer, such as this sound, right? And feeding it into, you know, making sure you can still play it and mute it, feeding it into the vocoder, right, as the external. 
and we can get a brighter sound with this enhanced. Kind of like the way it sounds without it. So in this example, we're going to do a spectral filter again, but in this example, this is a really useful one. I just have an operator. I turned off the vocoder, and I just have an operator with the, the fixed filter frequency mode on, right? So that way I can, instead of playing notes, it's always just going to play whatever I have it pointed to. So at this point, uh, 839 hertz, but I can sweep it manually, right? So if I turn on my vocoder, and my carrier is that synth from over here, we can get these really cool bass sounds. Now I've done some tweaking over here. I don't have the depth all the way up. With the depth all the way up, we get this sound. And that'll work too, especially if you turn the dry wet down a little bit. And you play with the range. At this point, the range was kind of low. Maybe let's let's make the range a little bit higher, something like this. But I think with the depth a little bit lower, you get more of those fundamental tones from the from this wavetable instrument, right? Hey, so I wanted to mention real quick that if you're enjoying this, um, I'm creating a Ableton Live course about sound design and synthesis. And this is, up until this point, my most requested course, and I'm really excited about it. If you want to be notified when that course comes out, uh, slap your email in the link up here and then down in the description and comments, and I'll let you know when it comes out. I already actually have two courses that are out right now. One of them is on songwriting and composition. The other one is on mixing and mastering with Ableton Live. It's all Ableton Live-based stuff. Yeah, so if you like my teaching style and you want to learn more about these courses, uh, there's going to be information in the description and comments as well on that. Awesome. Let's get back to it. Word. So in this example, I've got this just kind of basic drum beat here. Check it out. And what I've, I've decided to do is I'm using a vocoder to as a, as a mixing effect. This is actually adding some top end and some brightness to the transients of the drum. Check this out. So without it, with it. Pretty sweet, right? Let's build this from scratch. So I'm gonna grab a vocoder, and vocoder is really fun just to put on drums. As it is, I'm gonna leave it on the noise mode. Just listen. Because vocoder has a envelope, you can shape the release time to get some fun effects, right? You can also use the gate to kind of gate some of this out. So there's all kinds of fun to be had there, but this practical use that I'm trying to show you is that what I want to do is I want to enhance the transients, meaning that the vocoder is only going to fire, right, when the, the snaps of the drums happen, right? So what we can do is we can dial this in. I don't really need any support in the low end. Remember, these are this is the level of the bands. You can click and change the band's level. So these are the lows, mids, and highs, right? So we can start to just dial in the kind of sound that we want. What are the transients? What's the, the frequency range of the transients that we're trying to enhance, right? You can do any of them. You could even do low end if you wanted to. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll make a little hump here. right? Trying to add some of that punch, right? And remember, the range control interacts with this stuff, so as I change the range, so I've got the range kind of dialed in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open up the bandwidths a little bit. And now another thing that I want to do is I want to turn the release down so that I get more snappy transients, right? Boom. Now, what I'm going to do is, of course, this is going to, when, I bring, when I'm using this dry-wet control, it's going to make the original drums a lot quieter. So I could grab a utility, put it at the end, and make up my gain. Then I can click on the title bar of the vocoder, hold shift, click on the title bar of utility, right-click, and go to group. Now I can A-B this, and it should be about the same volume. Let's find out.
Now you can hear a lot more of those frequencies and you can be as extreme as you want with this, you know. I could maybe pull out a lot of the mids and just bring in uh, the very top end, see what this does. And remember, you can increase the release to get more attack, or you can bring it ro down real low to make it transparent, right? Cool. Anyway, all right, check this out. This is pretty sweet. So you can also take a vocoder and use the very same synthesizer that your modulator signal is as the carrier, too. You can, you can basically have the synthesizer modulate itself. So this is what this sounds like by itself. But now check out what happens when I turn on this vocoder. Right? Pretty weird, right? Let's go ahead and build that from scratch. So I'm going to grab a vocoder, and I'm going to choose modulator. So at this point, now the synthesizer is modulating itself. And that's the sound that we get. We get kind of this this kind of sound. If you hit enhance, of course, you get more of the top end because it's normalizing all the bands. And now I don't need that much depth because I really want a lot of this original signal. Right? Now the next thing I'm going to do though is if you play with the formant, <laughs> you get all kinds of warbly weirdness, right? And so if you play with the range, you can kind of dial in maybe like a lo-fi kind of thing. Sweet. And then the last thing, I have this LFO right here. I'll just map that to the formant. And now we get... Pretty rad, right? Pretty sweet. And also, when you're doing this, you may need to turn the level up of the, of the bands. Pretty sweet. Okay, so moving on, I have this wow synth. Check this out. Basically, what's going on here is the vocoder has a pitch tracking mode, all right? So let's go ahead and build this one from scratch. All right, so I grabbed a vocoder, put it on pitch tracking. So you can choose the range that this pitch, tra pitch, pitch tracker is going to work in. Blech. So here's where you can choose the range that the pitch tracker is going to be able to track in, right? If you have, if you're playing notes outside of this range, it won't know what to do. So you got to kind of make this higher, make this lower. And I put it after this analog and it sounds like this. Just a, a classic saw waveform. Now when I turn on this vocoder and I enhance this, meaning that I'm normalizing the bands that are derived from this, we kind of get this late weird sounding thing, right? But the cool thing is that it's like mega bright and now you can take this formant and really just go ham with it. And maybe try to mess with the range a little bit. Pretty sweet, right? That's fun. Now I took the same concept and I put this vocoder on a bass sound. The bass sounds like this. This really classic, normal kind of pulse width kind of bass. And then I turned on a vocoder with the pitch tracking, and I turned the dry wet down. So here's what it's with, totally wet. Pretty much the same sound, right? But if I turn this down, you can hear that now the vocoder and the original sound are kind of competing. And this would be a great candidate for some wacky effects, like put an amp on there. Auto filter on there and just see what we get. Cool, so in this last example, I just have some weird sound loops going, right? You could use a uh, simpler to do this or you could just drag and drop audio onto the track. Now this, this is what this sounds like. But I turn on a vocoder and I'm using it in the traditional external mode and I'm feeding it this operator, which sounds like this. It's just a square wave bass sound, right? So check this out. I'll mute that. 
I'm feeding the operator into here, and now if I play this, I can basically make really interesting synth, synth sounds because I'm using those synth sounds coming from the operator to control the pitch, right, of this sample. So check it out. That sounds really interesting. It sounds like, you know, there's, you're, you're like jangling some, like, I don't know, some keys on, on some metal bowl or something. Let's try a different sound. So that's kind of cool because this is just kind of like this weird, like, non-linear sound. It's just, it's like a... Some weird noise loop, right? But because it's kind of like random and weird, it gives us it gives us bass a really cool texture, right? Let's try this one. And of course, <laughs> you know, I, you know, my favorite control is the formant uh, control because basically the formant control is a filter center for each one of these bandpass filters. And you can just when you're doing this and you've got noise that's that's looping and you're controlling it with a, a synth sound, you can make these crazy squelchy bass sounds. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> so cool so something funny happened uh this uh producer floating anarchy must have watched my last video and thought it was funny or something and he took my voice and created a track of, of my voiceovers using the the vocoder so it's pretty funny um so i'm gonna play that for you on the outro uh, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Uh, I think it'd be really funny if everyone went over and followed this guy's SoundCloud. I don't even know who he is. He speaks broken English. He seems like a really nice guy, so maybe follow him. That would that'd make him happy. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.